So how do we eliminate fallow? I understand that you have a rainy season and a dry season. And it's hard to get cover crops established after harvest and maize. This is where seed was applied by an airplane prior to harvest while it was still raining. The maize is harvested. This provides pasture for the animals after harvest. This is a little different take. This is a perennial white clover that's used as a perennial mulch. Every year, the only herbicide applied to this field is that little strip right over the row of maize. Then, about this stage, they have a device called a row mow, which is a little mower. There's two mowing blades. Instead of cultivating between the rows, they use this row mow, and there's a blade that spins this way and a blade that spins this way. And the, the clippings of the clover and any weeds are blown at the base of the maize plants for a mulch that releases nitrogen. This field has one-third the herbicide, one, only one application of herbicide at planting on one-third of the area. That's all the herbicide it gets and no nitrogen fertilizer because the clover makes all of it. It yields very well. Kind of an interesting concept. Another way is to do cover crops because it's so hard to get cover crops into a corn soy rotation. Insert summer cover crops into the mix. You can see this is summer cover crops. That is uh, sorghum and millet and, and cowpeas and sunflowers that are recovering from being grazed. After it was grazed, there were winter annual cover crops established into, see this? You can see them just barely coming up. Now, the first time someone told me to do this, I said, no, that won't work. The summer cover crop will take all the moisture. It's going to take all the sunlight. And, and the winter crop won't have a chance. But look what happened. I tried this three years trying to prove that it would not work and actually it did work and worked great. And so why? The summer crop is taking all the moisture, but it also cools the ground. It creates a microclimate next to the soil that's cooler. And these winter crops use far less water when it's cool than when it's hot. And that makes all the difference. I got better establishment going into that. And then look at the amount of pasture that's available. So you can do, following soy, a winter cover crop, let it grow a little into the spring, terminate it, plant a summer cover crop, graze, graze both, and then directly plant another winter cover crop while it's still in the rainy season and get three cover crops in one growing season. And the people who have done this, that I've visited so far, have experienced quite a bit of success with this. How do you get deeper roots? This is not the way to get deeper roots. This is how people want to get deeper roots. This actually does not work. And I'll explain why. It's actually counterproductive. Um, remember, we're trying to build more carbon in the soil, not less. When you subsoil, you see the loss of carbon from the soil after a subsoiler is almost exactly the same as a moldboard plow. Look at that. You are losing carbon. We want more carbon, and I'll explain why. You don't need to rip. We think that loose soil will make it easier for crop roots to grow. Has anyone ever used a penetrometer to measure soil compaction? Stick it into a bell. How far does it go before it tells you there's, it's too hard for roots to grow? This far? If that far? So it's long. This bell has, has roots only four centimeters deep because the penetrometer says it's too hard. You dig a pit and there's roots three meters deep, which is right. Your eyeballs are the penetrometer. Hard 
is not a barrier to roots. What broke this concrete planter? Roots. Have you ever walked down a city sidewalk and seen where tree roots have broken concrete? I had a friend who was laying a subfloor before pouring concrete for a grain bin. He hauled the sand for the, the base in his grain truck with soybean seeds. After he poured the concrete, before it cured, he had soybeans punching holes in his concrete. Soy. And that's one of the weakest emerging plants there is. But it broke concrete. So why can a plant not punch through that little hard pan, the plow pan? It's down about 15 centimeters. It's not because it's hard. Because when it's wet, it's not hard. It's because there's a lack of oxygen. When you plow to lift that soil, think about it. If I weigh about 110 kilo, if I lift a 100 kilo barbell, if I'm standing on a set of scales, it says 110 kilo. If I pick up a 100 kilo barbell, assuming I can, it now says 210 kilo. For me to lift, I must press. For a plow to lift the soil above, it has to press on that below. And it can squeezes it together. And what leaves? What do you lose? You lose pore space that allows oxygen to go through the soil. You can see in this soil, the red soil has oxygen. So it oxidizes the iron compounds. The gray soil is reduced. You lose oxygen. And roots need to have at least 10% oxygen in order to function. You see the, the core on the top? My grandfather, I asked him, or I asked my father, why we had to go out and cultivate between the rows. He said, because if you don't, I'll kick your butt. I asked my grandfather, why do we have to cultivate? He said, number one, we control weeds. Number two, we have to. that work. The top core was taken from a field that has never ever been tilled. The bottom core next to it laying on the ground is from a field that's been tilled for 150 years. This is the bottom of each one meter deep core. See the one that's never been tilled that's still in the wooden frame? You see that it's red which means it has oxygen. You also see root fragments. The one that's been tilled for 150 years is gray and no root fragments. The root stopped at one quarter meter. The other one has roots a meter or more. So how do you get more roots deeper into the soil? Most of the oxygen that's used in the soil is not used by roots, it's used by microbes. Because microbes occupy all the soil. Roots only about 2%. So, during the summer, when it's warm, microbes are going crazy, using all the oxygen. But, when the temperature drops below about 10 C, the microbes stop. It's too cool for them. During the winter, there's a lot more oxygen in the soil. So if you grow a crop that grows during the winter, it can root deeper than one that grows in the summer. Look at this. Over here, in the upper left of that, is two photos taken from an underground camera in a plexiglass tube of roots. The one on the left is taken on the 3rd of the May, which is at the end of our winter of a canola cover crop root. And this was terminated chemically and planted soy no-till into this. The picture on the right is a soybean root on the 8th of August at the end of our summer. What do you notice about the soybean root? Went down the exact same path, didn't it? It drilled a pilot hole through the hard pan that the soybean root could follow. How much deeper can it grow if you use the winter crop to drill the pilot hole? I'll show you. Look at this. See the person sticking their finger 
and, and soil, that hole was created by a radish that winter killed and decayed. And then you see all the roots around it are annual ryegrass that holds that hole open. How much deeper can the next crop root when it has oxygen conducting holes like this? Okay. Also, the mycorrhizal fungi are able to root deeper, access water and moisture deeper than a regular root can by itself. This greatly increases your root efficiency, your ability to extract moisture from the soil. And I'll show you when you combine all these things, what you can accomplish. I was taught in college by very intelligent people who were given bad information. They said you cannot raise your soil organic matter. I disagree. What if you plant a perennial and many species of the perennial and you inoculate with mycorrhizal fungi and you use high density grazing to convert the above ground growth into manure and you graze at appropriate times with appropriate rest periods, what can you accomplish? This is a the side of a trench that I dug in my field. You see the white arrow is half a meter. That's all the deeper my roots would grow at the time. So I planted a perennial pasture with legumes, with forbs, with mycorrhizal fungi, high density grazing. What color is my subsoil there? How much oxygen do I have? That's why the roots stopped. This is what I planted. This is 30 days after the previous grazing. This was taken July 1, in the middle of our summer, previously grazed June 1. This is one year later. Same dip, a pit dug two meters away. Look at the black streaks in the start of soil structure, little lines of weakness. The black streaks are following roots. And then the next picture I'm going to show you is after three years. Is that a difference? You can increase your soil again. If you do all these things, you can dramatically change your soil. You can have soil that infiltrates water when it rains without runoff. You can have one that holds on to it. You can have one that does not evaporate moisture, does not lose moisture out the bottom, and grows crops cheaper with higher yields than what you have now. So that is my presentation. <laughs>